Welcome into the lounge. We are thrilled to be joined by one of our favorite guys, outside linebacker Pernell McPhee, who recently re-signed with the Ravens. We knew it was all coming. We knew that was coming from a mile away. <laughs> it was just a matter I, of time. Just, just a matter, matter of time. Of time. I, I love Pernell because he's one of the guys in the locker room that you can just pull a stool up and sit and talk to him for half an hour, and he'll just dish, man. And he's just as, he's like as real a dude as you're going to find. So thrilled to have Pernell on today. He shoots everything straight. He shoots yep. just straight the entire time, and I think he's going to do that today this interview. But before we do that, we want to say hello to our friends from Ram Trucks. With every new season, there's a new challenge to overcome, and Ram Trucks are built to crush every one of those. They're powerful, dependable. They're the back-to-back -back Motor Trend Truck of the Year. But beneath that hardened exterior, the Ram 1500 offers a standard of comfort with rear legroom designed for a comfortable lead. And the available rear auto leveling air suspension found in the Ram 3500 is beyond smooth. For great deals, go to Ram.com today. There's big cash allowances, allowances and exceptional lease offers. They're waiting for you, so go ahead and check that out right now at Ram.com. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and welcome in our guest, Pernell McPhee. We are happy to be joined by one of my favorite guys. One of my favorite dudes on the team, Pernell McPhee. Because you know why I like you, Pernell? That's that. This big dog. Big dog just going to hunt. <laughs> that's it. That, that's it. Just, that's... just, just the dog. <laughs> <laughs> just Sorry, right. <laughs> did you Can set, you... did you set off uh Purnell Siri? Is that what happened? He definitely set off my Siri. <laughs> <laughs> no lie. No lie. So no your, your, your iPhone also responds to hunting from dogs. <laughs> yeah, they understand it. <laughs> He's well, a, Pernell, I'm saying all of it. <laughs> we we are thrilled to have you back on the team, man. And uh I feel like this was just like a foregone conclusion, right? Like we were all just like, when are they bringing back Purnell? Because this has got to happen. Yeah, I mean, man, it's it definitely a blessing. Like, like always, um, I've just come back for the win this championship. That's all I want to do, and that's all on my mind. But over the last couple of meetings we've been having, um. And, and listen to Ray and, and people like Eric Wood of Dub talk on um, the last two meetings. I ain't get the chance to really listen to him speak this this year because I when Ray came, I think I was injured. But it made me a little flame in me and say instead of thinking about you know um, just chasing the rain, how about being a a, a a a it's not a teammate, it's a brother, and not only a brother, it's a a father figure or a leader or, you know, cause just listen to Ray, I was telling my, someone, I be having this little Bible study I have every Wednesday, you know, you be around guys and you tend to want them to be your teammates or your friends. You never don't want no guys around you leaders. You just want guys who are your friends. So man, just listen to Ray talk the other day. It just made me re re reevaluate re like everything. Like I still want that championship, but just like looking at these young guys like Jalen Ferguson and, and double A and a lot of lot more young guys just like beat up for them just as for a leader. You know, instead of just saying it's all about football, football, just beat up for a leader. Just mm -hmm. having this time out. It, it seems like when you re-signed with the Ravens last year and you came back, like you really took it seriously to, to be that mentor and kind of bridge that gap. Like you're like one of the only – you and Jimmy and Levine <laughs> – are, are like the bridge between the current players and the Ray Lewis generation. How seriously do you take that responsibility? Um, real serious, but I think I kind of slacked off it. Um, like the last three years because I I I wasn't around guys that was bred like Ray was. You know who who was born a leader. You know a guy who could grab another guy and make him run through a wall. So you know, like I said, I, I kind of got back around that this year. But hearing Ray talk, it just made me open my eyes, you know, besides going to get a ring, there's other things you could do. Like, like yeah, we all speak that leadership, but it's it's certain ways leadership look. Like, it's certain ways leaders look, you know. My biggest thing right now, my next challenge is just, just working on not cussing. I know that's going to be hard, but that dog. <laughs> but, you know, just listen to Ray talk, you know, it just made me start writing down stuff when I wake up in the morning and things like that. So... Man, this year right here gonna be very exciting for me because it just I'm gonna take it more more seriously. Like for as I never wrote down anything. I just had a schedule in my mind where I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna write down things and I'm gonna actually 
go grab guys this time. I mean, I had guys waiting on me. Um, you know, I, I had the Rickets. I tried to hold Rickets accountable a couple of times when we left and made them wait on me, you know, to get in the weight room. So make sure they beat us. So now I think what I'm going to do this this year coming up, I'm going to try to change something different, man. And, you know, that's just outside of chasing the rain. You know, just change up the way I approach the game. Like, for as let me grab guys and say, hey, man, let's go in the weight room together. Let's five o'clock workout, six o'clock workout. That, that's one of my challenges right now for the year. Yeah, it's very I, <laughs> Yeah, I feel like you already had, like, taken Jalen Ferguson in particular, just to name one guy. Like, I would always see you working with him after practice, like working your hands and different things yeah. like that. Like, so, but this is, this is a step further it's that you envision things. Because you could you could you could do those things like so when when you hear guys talk and everybody lead different ways, but when you hear guys talk, you you, you tend to leash on the ones that that that, that grab that, that get your attention. And when I was listening to Ray talk um, the other day, and when he got my attention, it was more than just the things that people see. You know what I'm saying? Like it's more than just. What, what people might see me and him doing in the weight room outside of, because like I said, instead of me saying, hey, you be in the weight room, I want, you know, I need to be in there before him. You know, it's just a different way of approaching it. You know, instead of saying, hey, instead of me telling them how to do it, let me guide them to do it. You know, in a way of sense of, you beat me, then I'm going to beat you there. Mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Right. Because right, I'm right, going to yeah. be in the weight room, but I'm not going to say I'm the 5 o'clock guy, the 6 o'clock guy. I'm not <laughs> So it, there's different ways like that because when you look at guys and they tell their stories, you know, I never had that that experience of listening to Ray story or, or even Eric Wood. I learned some stuff from him, and he was like, he got in that, that early morning routine. And, you know, only guys who really worked out early in the because I, I know going off track, but I used to always wonder, I say, Ray, Ray Lewis don't work out. You know, I play with him <laughs> I used to all, I'd never seen him in the weight room, but when <laughs> oh, it made sense. He'd be up six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. He already got <laughs> the thing going out the way. So, you know, it just little stuff, man. I, and just this time, man, where I just been locked in this house, I can't do nothing, but you can't do nothing, but thing. And just being back in means, man, it make you approach the game so different. It make you, it make you love the game from an aspect of just, just studying it and, and being a brother, you know? Cause I, I, I used to always approach the game well, this is why I get to take out my anger, you know, and, and, and you know, I also have that brotherhood, but I always approach the game with, this is why I take out my anger. This one will be very violent, very physical, which I'm still is, but just a different way of, it's okay to change, like change the way you live. Cause I always had that lift. I'm a lift. I'm, I made sure I got my lift in, but it was at a time where my body was fatigued, but I always pushed it, but I had never knew it. Cause you know, different guys' body different. Like me and Doom, Doom used to always have me working out like at noon. So, you know, but it only makes sense now, you know, listen to Ray talk though. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Like when I, when I heard that Ray and Eric Weddle and those guys were coming back and talking to the team over Zoom, I, my first thought was, oh, it's going to be great for the young guys. Like it's going to be great for these rookies, like a Patrick Queen, to hear from Ray Lewis. But it's crazy that you, one of the most veteran players on the team, that you are still getting things out of it. Yeah, bro, you can't, you can't, every day you can learn something. You know, it's never enough knowledge that that you can't learn. You know, everybody can learn something from anybody. Like, you can learn something from your kid, your child. You can learn something from your next door neighbor. You can learn from, you know, a homeless person. So I, I always like to listen to people talk and, and try to take things from different people and, and put it towards my life. And, you know, just getting that moment to hear Ray Lewis talk again and, and really able to pay attention. And not only Ray, even Eric Wood, you know, it just made me like these Hall of Famers, you know, they changed their game, they changed their life. But I never heard their story. But when you hear their story, it's like, okay, if, if, if I'm going to go in and say I'm going to get me a ring in this one of the two or the last year or whatever, why not get up five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, sacrifice and take the workers with you and say, hey, we're going to get us a rain. You know what I'm right. saying? Instead of saying, hey, this is our lift time. We're going to be here at this time when we got the lift. No, we're going to get up at five, six in the morning. Like military training, I get that. I understand that. Because <laughs> it's about what you're going to sacrifice to get what you want, you know. So it's just been a lot of things, man. You know, this quarantine time, how people just thank it. <laughs> so, it makes <laughs> so it real. <laughs> 
Does that mean an earlier bedtime for Pernell McPhee then? Um, um, um I go to sleep normally <laughs> around by 11, 30, 12. Oh. Yeah, but now if you're getting up at 5 yeah, o'clock. If you're getting up at 5 o'clock, that's what I'm saying. You better be going to bed at like, <laughs> like 9, 10. <laughs> Yeah, when 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 I get in that, I'm, I go. I'm gonna get in that training mode right now. See, I, okay. He, I ain't gonna make it seem like I just started doing it. I mean, I heard it like Monday. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a process. But it's a process. It's a challenge in life, like as a man, like I think if you're a man and you don't have no challenge, if you don't have this thing in your life where it challenges you, like what you living for? Because like anybody could live out life. And if you ain't challenging life, you just gonna live life. Like I think that like people who really look for challenges every day, then the people who really grow in life. Like rather if it's something, I don't know what it is, rather like I never wrote down my daily activities. And when Ray said that, that's a challenge for me. Now I need to start writing it down. So it's just any challenge. I ain't just saying no challenge where it can't be completed, but just a challenge of something that you never did before. I think that Every man should try to have a new challenge every day or, or once a week, you know, because as human beings, we, we get we get content with life. And I don't think nobody should be content with life. Well, so now now I would assume another challenge for you coming into this season is to come back and be the Pernell McPhee we, started, we saw at the beginning of last season, before the triceps oh. injury, when you were yeah. dogging on people. Yeah. Right? So how are you feeling and, and what do you kind of envision from yourself? What are your expectations for yourself? Well, I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. I've been listening to this little baby on um, the CD, this, the, the rapper little baby. And he made me feel like I'm 22 years old again. I mean, so, and I got my little nephew and my little brother out here working out with me. So, you know, I'm just enjoying the moments with them. Um, they gotta work out at six, and then we are gonna work out again in the morning. You know, we are gonna hit the um, park, wrestle, run hills and stuff. So, I'm just trying to get around like my younger siblings and try to make me feel young you know i'm here i am young now don't get that mistaken <laughs> you know sometimes you could just be like i've been doing this and what like god just putting like he taking out some of my friends and putting like my younger kin, kin folks in my life like my brother and my nephew and you know young guys who are working out and want to be something like you know like instead of getting them homeboys who just want to you know go do whatever i don't know but <laughs> <laughs> True talk though, man, it, it's amazing. Like just my tenth year that all like this is really my first time working out with my little brother and my little nephew, like trying to get them on board and and just they how young they is it keeping me young and you know out there running around and chasing or doing whatever I have to do, you know, to stay stay fit. And, and it just it's just amazing. But I still got that dog in me though. They ain't, they ain't gonna never leave, you know. I'm just sitting <laughs> back waiting on that time to come. <laughs> well, we know that that dog's never going anywhere. Uh, nah. So I think when the Ravens signed you last year, it felt like you wanted to show to people uh, basically what you just said, that dog's still there. Like you can still play. And <laughs> you showed that last year. What you Seven games, three sacks, I think. You were playing really well before you got hurt. Was that significant to you to play at the level that you did in, in the first half of the last season before the injury? Hey, bro, like, like I said, you be sitting here and you think. You think, you think, you think, and, and, you know, with that injury happening, I, you know, it's an injury. You can't do nothing but bounce back. And, you know, I thank God get his greatest soldiers to fight the, the battles, you know, that nobody can win. And I know I'm a soldier, and I know I'm a winner. So I just think that, man, whatever God got planned for us 2020, you know, he just shot me out for 2019 for a bigger moment. That, that's how I look at it, and that's how I'm going to approach my, my work. You know, in, in, in my mindset, just go out there and, and, and bogart everybody who in front of you. Because, you know, once the season, once once practice starts, I'm going to be lined up against the best tackle in the, in the NFL. You know, arguably one of the best tackles. So, you know, I'm going to try to take his soul if I could. But that's my boy. But, you know, <laughs> it just, man, you know, it just, at the end of the day, man, you just got to be thankful that you do get an opportunity to, to continue to play and work harder. And, when, and as you work harder, you know, become a student to the game, which I'm already are, and just just be thankful for every moment, man, and, and just be happy to do it. Because a lot of guys don't even be happy to do it. Like, just be happy to work out. Be happy to, to, to just be in the locker room full of guys, you know, just doing something great for a country or for your team. You know, that's, that's how I'm looking at it. 
it, it seemed like that injury last year was really a, a tough pill to swallow for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I shed tears on the sideline, man. I, I don't want to sound like Martin Luther King, but we all have, you know, different visions and stuff in life. And I thought that was one of, that was going to be our year. And when I got hurt and we went, and went on ahead and win nine games, I really, I knew that was our year. And I was like, God didn't lie to me this time. I mean, I thought I was going to be on the field, but I wasn't on the field. And not saying that God didn't lie to me this time. God never lies, but, you know, he, right. he told me it was going to come. I had to be patient. But, you know, I, I thought we were going to go win it all. And it was because I said once I won it all, I was going to be done. I don't care if I had 20 sacks and they offered me whatever, I'm done. You know, I just <laughs> want to, you know, especially with the Ravens, I won it all with the Ravens. But, you know, everything happened for a reason. Everything happened for a reason. And... It's 2020. We lost. We lost to Tennessee for a reason. I think it's gonna light a fire on a lot of guys on the team. If it don't, it don't need to be on the team, but I know it will. You know, everything for a reason. So 2020 gonna be very, very special. Yeah. For for you, when you went through the uh, this off season, I mean, was it basically I'm signing with the Ravens or nobody else? Like, how, did you even talk to other teams, or did you just know it was gonna be the Ravens? Y'all want the truth. Yeah, I want the truth. Give us the whole truth. <laughs> oh, got so the truth was, I, I was coming back with the Ravens no matter what. But it was kind of some other stuff. I I I was coming back. I, I, I that that's the truth. I was coming back. I can't say what I really want to say. It went nothing poor, like for us. Basically, you were trying to get more money out of other teams. Is that what you're saying? I, I was just doing it for the fun of it because I know I was going to the Ravens though. But you know, <laughs> so it was really for me like the, like this fire again in my mind to go train and go work out. Oh, nobody don't want me. I already know I was going to the Ravens though, you know. But in my mind, that's how I, you, you got to do something to make make. You, I do stuff to piss myself off. Like, right. let me let me see if any team out here gonna want to sign me, you know. Cause I already know I was gonna go back to the Ravens, and when the Ravens had reached out, cause I wasn't even reaching out to no teams. When the Ravens reached out, you know, I was already trained, and they had already um, hooked me up with this this, this facility um, in Fort Lauderdale. But um, when they reached out, I'm like, hey man, let's see what else team reach out. But in my mind, it's only to light a fire on me, mm -hmm. cause I already know how a lot of people think, you know, in I just let people be dollars, you know, because at the end of the day, we all human beings, you know, we none of us perfect. So I did that. I asked my agent to reach out to other teams. You know, nobody, of course, didn't want it, me at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool, though. It's cool because I promise y'all, it, 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 lit, it lit some homies saying, and when you catch whoever you catch, and it's going to be a time when I catch whoever I catch, me, I guess it's going to be the Cincinnati Bengals. Snatch one of their souls out their chest, you know. <laughs> in a good way, though, but for real. <laughs> How do you snatch somebody's soul in a good way? <laughs> Easy. Upshaw used to do it all the time. Double J, they used to do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Grown man's out there on that field. I mean, you know, you res I respect all my opponents, but, you know, you ain't going to get no respect to the end of the game. Like, <laughs> that's just how I play, but. Hey, you know, I'm just grateful though, man. <laughs> yeah. So how do you, how do you see your role kind of shaping up in 2020? I mean, last year you started you started all seven of those games. Then yeah. obviously you you were kind of grooming Jalen Ferguson, like I was talking about earlier. You took him under your wing and he stepped in and, and he played well, you know, for a rookie. You know, he played well. But now you have both of you back and, and it's kind of a one two punch, you know, or, or maybe a, a one one punch. How do you kind of look at your role and maybe whether you know, if Jalen can take a little bit more off your plate, that helps you play even better. Um, that part, I'm definitely going to, um, I really want, I really would love for, um, my boy, um, Jalen to step up and fill in there and, and, and I could play a role of, um, I did, um, in 2012, just, you know, after I got that injury where I was a third down rusher, um, a run stopper. You know, cause I, I I love playing the run. A lot of people don't. I love playing the run. Right. Um, so my main thing is, as long as we could work up a plan where I could get to that playoffs, it is what it is. You know, I could go every down then because 
you know, when you get in the season, especially playing in that front seven, D-line, you know, it, it, it get real. It get really real. And if, if you ain't mentally, physically, and spiritually prepared, um, you in for a long run. And I and I think at this stage of my career, I understand my, my body, and I understand where I'm at. You know, I, I wouldn't mind, like, hey, man, but he gonna have to work for it because I ain't, I ain't giving nobody nothing, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, he gonna have to yeah. work. But I wouldn't mind, like, hey, man, you know, go, because this is his spot anyways, you know. He's second year. I'm, I'm coming to take it. So he he got to be the one to uphold that, and he the one to finish the season at it. And, you know, that's my boy. It ain't no, it always competition, you know, but that's my boy, I love him to death. Um, but, you know, Everybody got to step it up this year. Everybody. I mean, what we did last year was okay, but it wasn't acceptable. You know what I'm saying? Everybody could say 14 and 2. Yeah, that's cool. That's great. But I think my coach Wink said it the other day. I mean, I'm saying it's an inside, you know, thing. But he said the other day a win around Baltimore is just a relief. And I truly believe that because I'm a winner. I don't even know. I hate to lose. But when I win, it's just like, oh, you know, it's just like, until you win that ultimate prize, and that's the Super Bowl, you know, it ain't nothing higher than that. You ain't did nothing. That's in my eyes. Because I felt that feeling before, and I would love to feel that feeling again. How close do you think this team is to feeling that feeling? I mean, it, obviously 14-2, and two, you think they were right there. You were right there on the, on the doorstep last year. Oh, we were. I had no doubt we was going to win it, but, you know, it went in God's work. But I think with the addition of Wolf and, and, and Big Boy, <laughs> It's gonna be scary. It's gonna be scary. <laughs> you you think this defense? I mean, so Wolf and Campbell. Then you get first round pick and Patrick Queen. You get Matt BK third round pick Malik Harrison. Like, are you fired up about these new additions to the defense? It's crazy. It's crazy. I know y'all. I know y'all fired up because y'all done watched all the films and <laughs> interviewed them. And I know y'all know the stats and y'all win. <laughs> See, I'm gonna get fired up when we get on the field and you know them pads come on and we in the fifth day of training camp and they go to growling and they ready to, you know, keep going through the day. You know, that's when I get fired up. Cause you know, you'll know not down no man, but I, I get fired up fifth day in training camp when the day is hard as hell. And <laughs> and when you get them boys go to growl and saying we finna take each other's soul, that's when I get fired up, you know. <laughs> but I'm fired up by by all, all the additions, though. I can't lie about that. Yeah. So, how, so how's this whole uh, virtual meetings? You know, stay at home. How's this treating you, Pernell? You, do you hate virtual meetings at this point, or what? I mean, I'm, I'm cool with. I feel like I'm free a little bit. That's it. I mean, I've been locked. Besides working out and stuff, I just been locked in the house, cooped in the house. So, and then it, it's just great just talking to guys, you know, who, who think like you. Basically, like you know, sometimes you got business friends, then you got other type of friends who just high school friends, and then you got guys who think like you. And, you know, and that's football-wise, you know. So it just be great just getting back into that, just talking to guys about football and just enjoying the moments of seeing each other face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how do you think that, uh, you know, you guys can still be as prepared as you would normally when you don't have OTAs and, and all that stuff? Like, is there any concern on your part that, I mean, it's league-wide. Everybody has to deal with this, obviously. But just how much harder does it make it for a player to be ready for what should be a special season? I mean, you got to do something every day no matter what. Um, you got to. Um, so I came in 20, 20, 2011. And, right. And, and that was my rookie year, and that was the lockout. And I, I ain't so OTAs and stuff I did not have. But what I do remember was every day we were still training almost like the combine. You know, sometimes we might get, we might go four days a week, three days a week, four days a week, two days a week, three days a week. So it was just different patterns where they had us where we worked out like really, really long. And then they had us where, we, where they gave us breaks where our body recovered. But the interesting thing I remember about that was when we came back to camp, when we came back to camp, it was a lot of guys, veterans, that was in shape and a lot of guys who was like 
maybe I say in third or fourth year winning shape. I ain't gonna call names, but I, I remember, <laughs> yeah, because I remember going up against a lot of guys that year. Um, you know, offense, defense. Um, you know, people like Ben Ross. He went on. He was out there, and you know, it just. And when you sit down and you watch how other guys was training, and I wish that we could have still been training like, well, you know, like even rate them. Like when I seen when we came back 2011, one thing I admire what they did in training camp, you know, cause they had did, they, they training, they ran in the middle of training camp on plays, you know, when they took plays, when they wasn't in the practice. Mm-hmm. So just seeing them doing that, I just knew that you got you, you got to do something every day. So like if guys sitting down every day, I mean at home and thinking about working out twice or three times a week, that ain't enough. Like you got to do something at least five days out of the week. And then maybe get a Sunday off. And Saturday, that's a half a day. So I say five. <laughs> yeah. But it's real though, man, because we never been in this position before, you know, us as humans you know, living in this earth where everybody be locked down in the house and it could cause a panic. And when people panic, the first thing they do is, is they create the fear and make you like not want to do nothing and make you shut down and make you lazy. And, and there's a lot of people lazy right now, you know? And that's just how life is though right now. Mm-hmm. Hey, I know you're in Florida right now. Did you love the Florida takeover of the locker room last year with Lamar and Hollywood? It just like felt like all the Florida kids were taking over the locker room. Felt like 2012. You know, we had a lot of Florida boys in 2012. I did. It's true. 2011. Yeah. But yeah, I love that, man. And them boys is amazing, bro. They, they just mind me on my nephew, my nephew and my little brother. Like, they young, they just energetic, just, you know, and they, they successful, though. That's, that's the main thing. And, you know, they humble kids. So, you know, it, it's very good saying, like, Sneak, Sneak from Florida, you know, Sneak the Florida boy, but right. Sneak. Or, you know, Hollywood, it's a couple more who was out there from Florida. It's a couple of us. Yeah, there's a couple there's a couple more guys. Those are the yeah. ones that really stand out. It's funny that you say like you, you when you think of those guys, I mean, you're like ten years older than him or whatever the number no. is. It's it's no. funny, you think of them kind of like your brother or your nephew. Like yep. you think of them like rather than they're teammates, but you just think of them as a completely different different generation, which they are. I mean, it's a big age gap. Yeah, it, it, yeah. They they act just like all of them. They were the same. <laughs> Social media, social media. I still can't get with social media. I, I don't have. Y'all don't understand why people use social media. They be like, bro, I don't understand social media right now. That's crazy. I'm different, bro. I'm different. Are, are they like are like the Fort Lauderdale, Miami guys different from like a Pahokee kid like yourself? Or oh yeah, That's... yeah, yeah. Okay. We we. We way different. We 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 chase gators. I mean, we we chase rabbits and hunt gators and and climb trees and we do all type of stuff. We we jump in, <laughs> like, yeah. Cause everywhere it's like I can't explain. You'll have to go down to the city. It's like different projects, and, and it's like two stores from Pahokee, where I'm from. And it's maybe two grocery stores, maybe one gas station in the, in the red light, like, no restaurants, and a population maybe. 4,500, mm-hmm. wow. but a lot of great athletes come from out of there, and there's still a lot of great athletes in there that ain't came from out of there, but we we different, and when I say different, like, we have to see each other every day, and when you have to see people every day, it's different from when you stay in the city, and you might see somebody every once a month or something like that, but we different, though, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what name? They, call- they city. <laughs> Wasn't the Anquan a Pahokee kid too? Yeah, both that, kind of, that explains something too. He had some dog in him too. Rough. He rough. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, done, he, he broke his jaw and came back and played. Like, <laughs> right. That same season? Yeah, he uh, tough. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. Hey. All right. Well, Purnell, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for joining us. And uh, yeah. we can't wait to see you on the field, dude. Yep, man. I appreciate it, man. Y'all stay safe up there, man. All right. Thank we'll you. do. You appreciate too. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Well, awesome stuff from Fresnel. I, I thought it was really interesting, the leadership stuff. Like, yeah. I kind of took him as, like, this great leader already and somebody who put a lot of thought and, uh, you know, just really cared about that a lot already. And he's like, nah, you know, I, I could have done better. 
I know that was fascinating to me. Like I, I, I really did feel like he took it seriously last year as being that bridge between current players and, and the original yeah. Ravens, some of the original Ravens, but it's obvious that he wants to put even more of that on his plate and that he's thinking of it. Like what I gathered is from a football standpoint, look, he wants to go out there and play, wants to play well, but he does not care at all about stats. He wants to win a Super Bowl and ride off into the sunset. And if that means that he has one tackle the entire season, or if that means he has 10, 10 sacks a game, it does. He doesn't care. Like he would be happy with one tackle. If they go out there, win a Super Bowl. And he would be happy if he was a role player and then helped a Jalen Ferguson. We kept talking about him, helped him blossom into a 10 sack guy. Like I yep. think that Purnell will be fired up if he sees Jalen Ferguson develop and he's part of that development on and off the field. Um, and then Purnell gets another championship. So he, he clearly is, is putting like a lot of importance on that leadership piece of the equation. Yeah, it's very cool. I, I'm excited, man, because now I think this takes a lot of the pressure off of Jalen Ferguson's shoulders. Yeah. It, it's a great insurance move for the Ravens. Purnell can start certainly if the Ravens need him to, but now you take he doesn't have to take as many snaps because of the experience that Jalen Ferguson has had. Let's not forget, it's kind of rare that a Ravens defensive rookie who was a third-round pick gets as much playing time and experience as Jalen Ferguson did. I mean, think of how long that Paul Kruger had to wait. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a number of different guys who have been drafted high even by the Ravens in the first three rounds have had to wait their turn because of the Terrell Suggses that have been playing there. You know, the Jarrett Johnsons. The, I mean, if you were going to go, different guys. if you were to go all the way back, Terrell Suggs wasn't a starter his rookie year. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, mean I, he was, he was a defensive rookie of the year, wasn't he? Right. But I think he was a yeah. situation. I know we're going yeah. back a ways there, but he was a situational yeah. player. And I just say, you know, I'm not saying Jalen Ferguson is an extra Suggs, but I'm just saying that he stepped in and played a lot on a really a good team. Snap. Yeah. A lot it's of all like, the Ravens didn't win three games last year. They went 14 and two. So he was getting a ton of snaps on a really good team. And the other thing with Purnell is at the start of the offseason, everyone was all concerned about pass rush and pass rush and pass rush. What can the Ravens do to add that? And they did it with Calais Campbell. Derek Wolf will provide some. They get Purnell back. And then you still have Jalen Ferguson. You still have Tyus Bowser. And then Matthew Judon, obviously, is the franchise uh, player. So I'm not worried about the pass rush. I think the defense is going to be excellent this year. It's already cool. good last year after that the first four games. They were yeah. excellent down the stretch. And I think they're going to be excellent again this year. Well, and don't forget, a lot of the pass rush this year is going to come from Calais Campbell, Derek yeah, Wolf. Yeah. A lot more from the defensive line. And and it's not like Wink's going to stop blitzing all of a sudden. So no. you're going to you're going to have, you know, Patrick Queen's going to be getting sacks. Malik Harrison's going to be getting sacks. Defensive back safeties are going to be getting sacks. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, sure. Hey, if Jadavion Clowney wants to walk through the front door, I'm not going to s turn him away. Right. But but I think the Ravens are, are in a very good position right now. All right, so before we wrap up, I want to give one more shout-out to our friends at Ram Trucks. There's passionate fans and winning traditions and legendary toughness. Those are the things why Ram Trucks and Ravens football go hand-in-hand. Hand. When it comes to power, luxury, and technology, like an available 12-inch Uconnect touchscreen, you can't find a better light-duty or heavy-duty truck. So go to Ram.com to find your local Ram dealer and schedule a test drive. Once you're in the driver's seat, you'll experience everything that goes into the making of a Ram truck, the back-to-back -back Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Great deals are going on right now, so shop online at ram.com. So go ahead and get that done, uh, and also send us your email. You can email us at the lounge at ravens.nfl.net. So that's it for us. Thank you so much for listening, but we will be back with you next week.